Unreal Engine 5.4 is out now, and with it comes PCG Biomes. And I'm going to show you how you can take a brand new project and actually set it up for yourself and try to explain to you the best I can of the basics of using the system. Now, of course, this is a very, very complex system. I'll go over how to set it up for yourself, how to bring it into a new project and get everything working and explain some of the important things that you should be aware of when you're creating it for yourself so you know where to look and what to change for your specific setup. So here I am in a brand new project. Now we need to go into edit, plugins and we can enable PCG procedural content generation framework and it's going to tell you it is in beta just click yes and then search for biome now this will give you the actual biome core which is the thing you need to run everything and it'll also give you the sample you don't need to turn on the sample to use it but I will be turning it on and using some of the things from the sample to kind of get a good base start because of the way I see it if they've created some of the things for you already we might as well start using it as our base and then work off there so go ahead and turn both of these on click yes through both of them and then restart your engine once your engine has been restarted go under settings and make sure you have show engine content and show plugin content both checked on and then you can go under engine plugins here and actually get the access to the new stuff so if we scroll all the way down we can go to pcg biome sample content and then we can go to maps and here is the biome sample level now we're going to need to go here a few times so to make it easier for myself i'm going to right click on this maps folder and i'm going to click add to favorites and all that does is add it right here under maps so if i need to ever access it again i just click this location and gain access well, let's go ahead and open it up so we can just see what we're working with so here is our pcg biome setup now a few notes that this is actually creating all the vegetation on this. What it is not doing is creating the landscape for you. Originally, I thought the PCG biome system both did the landscape and then everything on top of it. But actually, it does not paint anything for you and it does not deform the landscape for you. Now, you can use other things in conjunction with this to do it for you, but by default, it does not do it all. If you're going to do, for example, a large terrain and you're using some kind of actual map to create the biomes, you probably want to use the same kind of map to create the terrain with, and then they all will line up exactly where you want it. So now that we know that it's loaded in and everything is working correctly, I'll go ahead and create a new level and you can create an open world, a basic, whatever kind you want, or start from one you already have. This works with both world partition and it works with regular single levels. So you can do it with every one you want whatever is better it depends on your project in my case let's go create a new basic level and then i'll go ahead and just remove this ground plane we don't need it and we'll create a landscape now this is an important note this system only works with landscapes at the moment from what i can find because it samples it so that means you cannot just take these things and place them on something like a floating island where you create it through a mesh now it's possible of course to modify it and adjust it to do whatever you want it is pcg after all and you do have access to all the nodes if you wish but by default it is is currently working only with landscapes so from here i'm going to go ahead and import a file and i'm going to use that as my base so here's the file here that i have it's only a 1k image i can go ahead and change the height of this let's say something like eight it seems good that seems a little more accurate to the actual landscape and with everything then set up i go ahead and import and here is my landscape now it is just a simple little island here that we're going to be using and for our purposes this should do just fine i'll go ahead and save this map and then i'll also right click on my pcg folder and add it to favorites now we can have access to both of these locations really quickly so we can jump between the two so we'll go open up the biome sample level and what i want to do is i want to grab this water plane so copy it and i also want to get the material for this landscape just to have one as a base as i don't have one by default so i'll go ahead and navigate to it and then i'll reopen my project and then click back to go back to the previous one and now i can go ahead and assign this actual material to it and paste in our water plane and of course we want to position it exactly where we want something like that should be good now we have the material assigned but of course it's not doing anything so under landscape we can go under paint and just select the layer info that is already built in of course if you're doing this for yourself make sure to create your own layer info create your own material etc in this case i'm just reusing the same information that i have from the sample as this is a good way of showing you guys how it all works but now that's all set up i can go ahead and just start painting it and this paint everything i'm painting here is not at all indicative of where things will go it is entirely separate so keep that in mind that even as i paint this it is just how i want it to look and this can of course be all driven through an auto material you don't need to do it all manually an auto material will do just fine 
and then you can combine that auto material with the rest. So let's say this is my landscape. This is what I want to use. And now I want to populate it with everything that the PCG Biomes has to offer. So to get started, let's go open up our PCG sample map. And there's a lot of things here that we're going to want. Yes, sir, I'm going to copy these biome setups here. I'm also going to grab the BP PCG Biome Core. Now to make it easy for myself, I'm going to actually take select this Biome Core, scroll down to Biome Core, and then do cleanup. So we'll just clean everything up. And then I'll go ahead and just select all of this. And I'm going to copy it into our new level. And I'll, of course, explain to you how it all works and how to use it for yourself. It's just a good baseline to get everything working and tested for yourself. So once in here, I'll go ahead and paste it all in and then you'll see you have this volume. Now we need to make sure that the volume actually encompasses our level. So I'll go ahead and drop it down a little bit. And then there's one thing that despite you copying it from where it was, does not actually get copied. And that is in this biome core, in the biome core actual node, which is the PCG graph node. This is the new icon for PCG graphs. It's right here. If I open up parameter overrides, this cache cell size is at zero. By default, it is 800 in their level. But when you copy it, for some reason, this value gets reset to zero. So on I'm going to do is set this back to 800 or X, Y, and Z. And then if I click generate, you can see we have a few trees here and there, but really not a lot. You'd expect to have a lot more here. Let me go over now how everything works with the system and what everything means and how to get everything configured to what you want it to be. And we'll start with this PCG biome core as this is the main thing. So the first thing is the blending range, which is simple. When you have a lot of biomes, you might want to blend between them. And the range, of course, means how much each biome kind of blends into itself. Keep in mind that this is all biomes. So you can't have a single biome that has a very narrow blend and another biome that has a very wide blend. You might want to do then something more custom and create a new biome to kind of put it in between if you want a sharper or more rough setup because you can overwrite things. But by default with the map, this is how it is. Next thing you have here is the biome texture projection. So if we open this up and then open the parameter overrides, this is the actual map that is being used. So if we open this up, you can see this is just a simple map and it has different colors here. It has red, green, blue, yellow, orange. With this system, you have as many biomes as there are RGB values effectively. Now, of course, the bigger and more you go, the more you have to set up for this. But in terms of having more biomes, you just create new colors and they can be any color combination. And after we finish it with this section, I'll show you how they're red and how they're configured to be what they are. But this is the map that they're using. And a note here is it is a 1K map and they've disabled map maps on this. And of course it is not an sRGB map. But a few settings here, you can tile it, you can tile it how much, you can change the, of course, the actual image of it. You can use, if you're using a partition, you could specify where the partition starts or use the landscape as the world origin, which works for everything I've tried so far. But if your partition is somewhere else entirely, then you might want to configure it manually and you could do so here. The texture size here is 1024 times 100. This is the size you want. And you can actually preview this on the map. I move this down a little and come here, just bypass a few of these and we'll go to this debug display biome cache. If I check that on, and then click generate. You can see this is the actual image that we have here. This is the same image as you can see right here. There's the yellow, there's the blue, the green, the red, etc. Now, if you have something black like this, that means it doesn't understand this color. And I'll show you where to configure this color down the line. So what do we do if we want to change this actual setup? What you could do is navigate to this location and then duplicate it for yourself. I'll just call this PCG biome texture projection and I'll move it to my actual PCG folder because theirs is already configured and you don't probably want to modify all of their stuff. You want to make it your own. So you can use theirs as a base, but then just make alterations to the instances. So now if I open this version up, I have all the same things configured, but now we can swap out this actual map and I've gone ahead and created my own map here. Everything around here is blue, green, yellow, orange, and red. The same color scheme as the original map for convenience in this case. But again, you can pick any colors you'd like. If you're enjoying the tutorial so far, I would love to hit the like button and subscribe for more awesome tutorials like this and possibly a lot more PCG biome tutorials building off of this. So I'll go ahead and just swap this map out right here. And now I can go ahead and replace this with the one in our level. It takes a moment to recompute. 
And now you can see it is now actually our map. So if I turn off this biome cache, you can see it is now configured kind of for where we want our map to be. As you can see, this color here isn't matching. The orange didn't originally match and still not matching now. So before I continue on with this, let's fix this and I'll explain how that is configured. And that's to do with the biome setups that we actually copied over from the previous one. So if I select one of these, it has a few files here. It has the definition, the assets, and the runtime assets. I haven't gone in depth yet on the runtime aspect of it, so we'll be going over the just the regular setup. But if I open up the definition file and then open the biome definition, you can see it has a name and it has a color. And this color is the color from your map. So broadly forest will appear here. Now you are able to have multiple biomes all use the same color, but you cannot specify multiple colors for a biome. And so because of this, I feel like it's probably better to just create a new biome that is a blend of certain biomes and then use that as that color. As this biome color is a single entity and is not an array, I cannot specify I want this to be in green, orange, and red, for example. It is only going to be in green. But if I open up landslide here, you can see it is orange, but it is just an incorrect shade of orange. Because if I turn off sRGB, you can see it is very dark, which is very different than the actual orange that we have here. Now my photo editing program, I can go ahead and check the actual color and just grab this actual hex code and copy it over into Unreal. I guess like hex linear and paste this in, press enter. And you see, as soon as I did, it is now detecting it as its own color. Like, okay, and now it is correct. Now this biome priority, I have not figured out yet. Even when I have multiple biomes overlapping the same color, Biome priority doesn't seem to do anything, and I have not seen it regenerate a single time when tweaking with it. So at the current moment, I'm not sure about what this does. And the name is completely up to you what it, what it is. It doesn't actually affect anything. It is for you to understand what it is when you open the file. But now you can see all the colors that you've set up are now here. And you might notice these black spots occasionally. Now, in my case, with my image, this is not actually perfectly solid color. So you can see if I zoom in, into these pixels, well, this is not all exactly the same shade, which means the RGB value is slightly off. And that is why it is detecting black because it's saying, okay, well, I don't know what that pixel is. So clearly it's a biome that we don't have. So it's gonna be red, but don't worry, that's fine. Because as you recall in our PCG biome core, the first value is the biome blending range. Even though there's no information there, you'll still blend from the nearby biomes on top of each other and kind of cover that. Now, of course, you're doing it for yourself. You might wanna actually make it so it's exactly full solid pixels. In my case, they're a little bit off to show you what happens when it is not quite correct. I'll turn off the display biome cache right for now. And let's move on to the next thing, which is the root point filters. I'll go ahead and open this up. And again, you have the base set up here and then the filters themselves down below. If I open that up, for some reason, the first one is empty, but the other ones all have different filters. And you can, of course, navigate to them. And these are the actual graphs that they're using. These are all instances. So if you want to make modifications to one of these, just go ahead and duplicate it and then tweak the values for your own setup instead of modifying the ones in the plugins directory. But there are a few different ones, noises, flows, sun exposure, water distance. Effectively, they just slightly randomize the actual points that you're using. So if I go ahead and just move this down, there's a convenient checkbox here, debug bypass global filters, which are these right here. If I check that on, this is actually everything that is being generated. And you can see, well, it's being generated all the way out here where we don't want it. We probably don't want to have it all in the water. We probably want to have some angles and things controlled. The first thing we want to do is modify the water level because effectively that is the one big thing that is actually cutting off all the way up here. So if our water level, if we select it, is at negative 1840. So I'm going to take this and here's the water distance level instance. I'm gonna navigate to it. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it for myself. I'm gonna move it to my PCG folder. And now I can take this water level and just swap it out with this water distance one, plug this in. Now, all of this is already set up for you. The filter attribute, the minimum and the max. And this is why I say, go ahead and start with the actual content sample because it fills out a lot of the stuff for you. So as you're kind of getting started and learning everything, you have a good baseline. But now that I've swapped this out and go ahead and open it. And here you can see the water level. So we can control where the water is. Now, in our case, the water is at negative 1840 because of the position of our landscape. So I'll go put in negative 1840. And already you can see that all the trees have now appeared everywhere we want. So now you're seeing all the different actual types of biomes that we have set up here. So over here, we have the actual cactus. This is the desert biome. We have a few different biomes for the trees. And here's the 
rocky landscape biome. But now that we actually see everything, it's a lot easier to control some aspects. So again, we can go to biome PCG core, go to biome core. And now if I was to change this blending range, you can actually see the difference. So I'll go in game mode to remove the highlights. And now if I change this from 2,500 to let's say 10,000, you can see that the biomes blend together a lot more. These forests kind of spill into each other considerably more. The rocky mass actually goes much further down and the trees go further in this way. So this is entirely going to be dependent on what kind of look you want and how big of an area you want it to blend between. Of course, I can go ahead and just change it to something like 100 to make it super small. And then you're effectively getting a border. As you can see, it is now much more distinct in where the actual lines are. Pretty much nothing is overlapping. So I'll make it something like 5,000 for this one. So we have a little bit of overlap between the biomes. The next one down is our child point filters. If I come over here to the forest, these are the child points. And we can actually see that if I scroll down, we have a maximum child aspect depth. If I set this to zero, you can see all of the little extra things go away. Effectively, these are the little objects that just scatter around your main pieces. And just like the main point filter, this is works the same way. It also has different filters. So in this case, it has a noise and the water level. And you can control how many there are. If I set it to be two, it'll be a little bit more of them. But this effectively controls how many of these points are being generated. Now this child input points rate multiplier doesn't seem to change the actual amount of these points, which I thought it would. So it's something I'm still investigating as to what specifically it is modifying. And when I learn it, I'll of course share it with you guys. And of course the last option is to actually output the data for runtime generation specifically, but in our case, we're not doing runtime things. So I'll go ahead and uncheck it for myself as it is not needed. Now, as always, the project files for this are gonna be available on my Patreon where you can join these wonderful people in supporting what I do. It means a lot to me. So that way, if you need to, you can also take a look at how this is set up from the base graph if needed. Thank you so much again to the patrons. And if you'd like, Join the Discord down below and we can help you out there for any questions you might have. With that, let's get back to it. Well, that is everything kind of in here that you need. So keep in mind, all of these settings are in the actual PCG graph. A lot of times you might want to expose the stuff into the root, but in this case, you have to scroll down to the actual biome core and then you'll get access to it. And most of the stuff here is accessed that way. Very little stuff is actually exposed to the root blueprint. You always have to dig down into the PCG graph. But now that we have this all generating, let's fix up some issues that we have. For example, if we come here to the desert, well, one, it is not very flat terrain. These cactuses, because of it, are generating at kind of crazy angles, and we'd like them to be a little more straight up. In fact, we have this problem a little bit with the trees and some other things. Now, the shrubbery can, of course, be aligned to the normal, and in the majority, this isn't directly along the normal. It is actually still slightly towards up, and we can control that. So now let me show you how to configure the actual biomes and what is in them and how they look. And we do that in our biome setups. So as I mentioned before, in our definition, you control the color and color whatever you'd like. But in the actual assets location, we can just open this. This is the actual biome file. So if I go ahead and open this up, here are the different pieces of this biome. So if I open up index zero, here is the spruce tree that it is. Now you could you can make it enabled, disabled. You can change the weight of it. You can change the generator that it's using. So if I navigate to the generator, you can see shared rocks, shared trees, and I can open this up. And then in the generator, there's more generator graphs. You can configure all this stuff for your own project. I can open up the sampler trees and I can actually go in and completely configure then the generator for the trees. If I want something that are more complex or more simple or just make slight modifications, I can do that here. But assuming the generator is fine, we can have all sorts of inputs here, including the mesh, assemblies, actors, child assets, and a lot of really interesting things like, for example, the debug options. We can isolate these trees. If I click isolate, you can see we're now only seeing this tree and only in this biome. So it is much easier to actually troubleshoot and modify what we need here. And if we need to, we can even show the bounds of this thing, which gives us the bounds of the object. So knowing that we have this isolate, I'm going to open up the desert and let's modify the cactuses. So we'll go ahead and select desert, open up the desert asset. I'll go ahead and take this third cactus here and I'll isolate that one. And now we can see it is only showing this cactus because this is the cactus that we have kind of angled incorrectly. So there's a lot of controls now under asset options. We can allow overlap if we're fine with it merging with things. We can force the actual scales. We can move it around, rotate it, etc. Now, of course, this is on top of the 
already randomness that the original base has. But there's an interesting one called Orient Upwards. So this is at point four. If I set this completely to 1.0, you can see that no matter the angle of the terrain, it is now facing exactly upwards. And of course, if I set this then to zero, well, it now matches exactly with the normals of the terrain. So if we did something like 0.8, for example, you can see it is now facing mostly upwards, but it does have a little bit of a lean with the terrain, which in this case is probably more of towards what we want. Again, there's a lot of options here. There's runtime options, there's filter options. So for example, here's the flow controls, the flow filter that we had, the sun exposure one, the water level. So if you wanted something to actually appear underwater, you can make it per asset per biome. Now I'm gonna uncheck isolate. And then in this whole configuration, what we can do is now search for any one of these and modify it for all. So if I search for orient upwards, we have access to all of them at once. So I can go ahead and just plug in, for example, 0.8 for these and modify them. Now, some of them we don't want it to actually modify because some of them are the rocks, but I'll show you if I set them to be 0.8. You see, even the rocks are now facing towards the sky and we don't want the rocks to be facing towards the sky. The rocks can go ahead and just angle with the actual normal. By using the same method, we can go ahead and configure these guys to also face more upwards if that is what we wish. Now, there's still a lot, lot more in this biome plugin. Effectively, this is a, just a very advanced PCG graph with a lot of modularity to allow you to have a lot of controls. But this should now give you a pretty good starting spot to take your project for wherever it is bring in your own landscape and make it work with this biome setup. Because you can, again, make it as big as you want. If I wanted more biomes, I could just go ahead and take these biome setups and I can just go ahead and just duplicate one of them, name it whatever I'd like, change the mountain forest color to be something else, name it something else for convenience, and then swap out the assets. And of course, make sure that my actual mask is appropriate for that color and I'm good to go. Now, if you're now looking for things to populate your world with, check out this video right here, where I show you how to take modular assets and put them all together to create full buildings with PCG.